Hello again team, it's Jess or Jessica in and welcome back for another video. Today we're looking at bullet journal spreads for students. Student life can be really busy and keeping track of all the things you need to do is important in making sure you're setting yourself up for success. In this video I've included a combination of layouts that are useful for both high school students and university students. As per usual, links to other related videos and any of the equipment I've used in the setup of these layouts can be found in the description box below. But without further ado, let's have a look at our spreads. The first layout we have here is a student-specific year at a glance. On here you can colour code all of the days of your academic year to note when your term dates are, when the holidays are. You could also use it to note due dates if you had a key with your different classes or courses. This layout could stand alone, or you could combine it with the next idea here, which is a semester overview. I will note, I'm going to be throwing around words like semester, term, trimester, etc. But really just use whatever terminology that your school, or college, or university uses. In terms of the semester overview though, there are a fair few ways that you can set this one up, but essentially what it is is a student version of a future log. The example I have here has three semesters with the top of each space having the week numbers for that semester. When you get given an assessment date or due date, you can write the assessment name on the right here, and then put in an initial for the day of the week it's due, underneath the relevant week number. Of course, this is just one example of what your overview could look like. As I mentioned, it's essentially a future log, and I do have another video of different future log ideas, which is linked in the description box below. Turning over though, we're onto the next idea, which is a timetable layout. I couldn't possibly leave this one out. Even as a teacher, I find this super helpful to have in my bullet journal. Of course, you would set this one up to suit your timetable, so whether that be on a weekly rotation, fortnightly. I know that some schools have six day timetables, so make sure that you're setting it up to accommodate yours. The example we have here would be a weekly rotation, so the same times for each class on Monday through Friday, with each of those having six periods. I've also included spaces for morning tea and lunch, so that then if you had any kind of clubs that you attended, or regular tutorials that you went to, you could put those in as well. If you don't have classes that run in specific periods or spells, then down the side here, instead of listing those out, you could list the times of the day, so 8am, 9am, 10am, etc. And then put in the timings of your lessons or lectures. A very related layout we have is the weekly schedule here, but rather than just looking within the hours of school, this one also looks wider than that. So before and after school, and also the weekend. This can be really helpful to give you a snapshot of the time you have available outside of your regular school commitments and other regular commitments, like work or clubs, sport, that kind of stuff. The nice part about being able to see this is that it allows you to consider when you can put your study in. So what times can you dedicate to your revision? What times can you dedicate to your homework or assignment work? That kind of stuff. Of course, those things can also be incorporated into this weekly schedule. So you see we have study blocks on this one. We also have work blocks and sport blocks along with school. What blocks would be on your one would obviously be up to you and your circumstances. But the general layout of this one is that we have the times across the top and then the weekdays down the side. It is also good to note that with this one being a horizontal layout and this one being a vertical layout, you could of course have those the other way around. Really just make sure that you're setting up your timetable or schedule in a way that computes well with your brain. Personally, I like vertical, but I know a lot of people prefer horizontal. Flipping over though, we have the course or class overview page, and this is effectively the one-stop shop for all of your course details. What you record on here, again, is very much up to you, and really depends on what information you think would be helpful to refer back to. The example I have here is for a university course, so it has the course code and course title, how many points the course is, because the way that my university degrees were structured was based on points, the dates that the course is going to run from, the coordinator for the course and the lecturers, and also the course tutors. For each of these I've also included a little email icon, so in theory I could after this write their email address just so that if I ever needed to contact them, I knew where to find those details. I've also included the lecture times and the tutorial times, any textbook requirements, and any assessment information. As I said though, what you include here is completely up to you, but some other examples would be things like due dates, any office hours for your lecturers, where your classes actually are, so what rooms they can be found on on your campus, if you have a class representative, do you have any key resources that you need to list, and anything else. 
Something that I know I found very helpful at university was having a grade tracker. And while I didn't have a bullet journal when I was in university, mine was digital, this still was a super helpful layout for me. The way I've done this page is based on the idea of it being one page for one course. So on this page, I've listed out all of the assessments that count towards my final grade and the percentage they contribute. I then have a column to list my score for those assessments and what those assessments were scored out of. Using those, I could then figure out my percentage for that assessment and thus use my percentage and the overall percentage to determine what contribution I got to my overall grade. So for instance, 95% was my score in assignment one, supposedly, and 95% of 10% will give me 9.5% towards my final grade. Having it listed out like this means come the end of the course, I can see the total overall score that I got. Another thing that I always enjoyed including on my grade trackers was a kind of what if section. So considering what is the minimum possible score I can get in the final exam to get different grades. For this I had to consider what is my percentage before going into the exam, and also is there a minimum grade required for the exam. So most of the exams that I did at university required you to get at least 40%. From this I considered the minimum percentage to get each of these letter grades, and thus what was the percentage I needed from my exam. So my final contribution before exam here, being taken away from that percentage required for the grade. I then consider what score was actually needed in the exam to get that grade. You can see I've written some little formulas here for each of those calculations, but this is something that I always found useful to consider before going into a final exam, just to put my mind at ease a little bit. Flipping over, and we are now onto the course materials page, and this page effectively acts as a shopping list for your back to school shopping. So considering what do you need for each of the classes you're taking, how much are they going to cost, and thus how much do you need total. Of course this doesn't just have to be textbooks, it could be things like stationery, if you need a particular workbook or exercise book, any pieces of software or subscriptions, that kind of stuff. The next idea we have is a list of readings to do, or effectively a reading log for your studies. On this one I have three columns, so a column to list out the book title, a column to write down the sections that you need to read, and then a column to say when those sections are due to be read by. As you read each of the sections, you can just tick them off in the box beside the section title. It's good to note that some courses may give you chapters to read, and some may give you pages to read, so it might be useful to be able to differentiate between the two. After this, we then have the idea of student-related trackers. Now, I love trackers, and there are plenty of different trackers you can use as a student, but the one I've decided to focus on here is a study log. So on this one, each little square would represent a certain amount of time, say 15 minutes, half an hour, really depends on the spacing you're going for. And then at the top here, I have a color code for each of the subjects. Then on any given day, depending on how much time I do studying for each of those, I'll just color in the relevant number of blocks. I've also noted that it may be useful to combine study trackers with other types of data too. So on this example, I have a sleep tracker. Just so you can see if the amount of sleep you're getting affects how productive you are in your study. The nice part about study logs like this is that you can start to pay attention to patterns. So are there certain days of the week where you're just not getting very much study done? Are there certain subjects that you're prioritizing over other ones? That kind of stuff. The next idea we have here is a homework log slash student Kanban board. So on this one I have six sections for homework being set, doing any kind of preparation or research for the homework, drafting your assignment or homework piece, finalizing your assignment or homework piece, having it submitted, and then having it graded. Each of your assignments or pieces of homework would be written on a little sticky note like we have here, and then as you complete set tasks, you can move it along to the relevant boxes. The idea for having a graded section down the bottom here is that when you receive a mark back, you may not immediately put it in your grade tracker. So to remind yourself that you still need to do that, I have a section down here so that you can see which pieces of work have been graded, but haven't been recorded yet. Over the page and the next idea we have is a place to record your study tips. Sometimes it's just good to have a reference of reminders in your journal for things that in theory you know but you don't necessarily always apply. Like the idea that instead of cramming you should space out your revision efforts. There are plenty of study tips online but I've just done a summary of 12 of them here. So having this as a reference in your journal may be helpful. On the other side of this page our next idea is a study checklist. This one again is based on the idea of one page per course, but here you would list out what your lessons were or lectures were. So for instance, introduction to organic chemistry, naming organic molecules, etc. And then the section on the side here is for all of the different study tasks you could do. 
So the ones I've got here are doing pre-readings, attending your lecture or lesson, taking lecture notes, doing any readings that were recommended after the lesson, doing highlighting and annotating of those, doing any wider reading, writing your summary notes, making flashcards for the lesson, completing any of the set workbook pages, and then doing any revision questions. What goes in here, again, is completely up to you, but those are just some ideas. It is good to note that all of the pages that I have in here are ideas, and please do tweak them to suit your needs. While this page is very much a have I done, the next one is more of a how will I do. So this one is a study planner. On this one I have a section for any test details, so when is the test, what course is it for, how much of my grade does it count for, and then under this we have the bulk of the planning. The first part of this is listing out the strengths and weaknesses that this person has for the content of this test, just so that when they're thinking about doing their revision, they know the things they need to focus on. After this we have a progress bar, which tells us the amount of time that has passed, or the amount of time left until the test, and also the amount of progress they've done in their study. Each section on here might be days or weeks, really depending on how much time you give yourself to revise for this test. Underneath here we have the revision task list. So on the right we have all of the tasks that need to be done, and then on the left here we have the increments of time. So this could be first day of study, second day of study, etc. A dot here represents a scheduled task, so for instance practicing with flashcards is scheduled for every day of study, and they've completed up to day 7, but still have 8 through 12 left. Thus a cross means that the task has been done. A similar but slightly different idea is that of an assignment planner. So rather than planning for the revision needed for a test, this one's an assignment or assessment that has a due date, or a day that you submit the work. It starts fairly similar, so with the details of that assignment, when is it due, what subject is it for, how much does it contribute to your grade, but after this the sections are different. So for this one I put in a requirement section, so things that you need to do as part of the assignment, and also a little section to note what your assignment's about, so in particular where you get to pick your own topic. Anytime I made an assignment planner, I really liked having a section for word count, so that as I got to certain word count milestones, I could check them off. Underneath here is the planning for the assignment, so this one's more of an example of a report or an essay, where you have certain sections and set tasks that you need to do for those sections. So for instance, researching, writing a first draft, reading over that first draft, making edits, and then finalizing that section. While this part's very much broken down by sections of the assessment, the progress section under here is broken down in a different way. So doing all the research, writing the full first draft, doing a self-check, etc. And for each of the sections down here, I've also written down an expected due date, which were all selected by working backwards from the submission date. So it had to be submitted on the 4th of October in theory, which means the final copy should be done by the 3rd, it should be checked over by a peer on the 1st, and so on and so forth. Flipping over though, I also had a bunch of ideas for student-related reference pages. And while I didn't want to necessarily set up an example of those in this journal, just because there are quite a few of them, I still wanted to make sure I gave you those ideas. So the reference pages I listed here were common contacts, that could be for your teachers, for your tutors, etc. Any relevant formulae that you need to use for your classes, so whether those be mathematical or scientific or economic. A place to write out common writing structures, so whether that be recommended paragraph or essay formats. A place to list out relevant vocabulary, whether that be course specific vocabulary, or maybe vocabulary that you learn as part of another language. You could have things like referencing guides, so how to do MLA referencing or APA referencing. A list of any student services, so any resources that you can access as a student through your school or your university. Also a list of places that offer student discounts can be helpful. So places that you can get a certain percent off the total bill, or cheaper versions of regular items for being a student. You could have a reference page for your favourite study materials, so when it comes to your study sessions, you know which materials you prefer. You could have a reference page for any shorthand that's used by either you or your teachers. You could also have a reference page for any character lists, and this idea mainly came from the idea of Japanese, so you could have a list for your hiragana and your katakana characters. You could also have a reference page for study rewards or study resources, and really anything else you can think of. I've also noted that putting reference pages where you can find them easily is really important. So you could either put them at the front or the back of your journal, or you could mark the page with washi or a tab. 
The next idea we have here is for extracurricular relevant pages. And again, these could have all of your extracurriculars in one, or they could be themed for specific extracurriculars. So a page for drama club, a page for netball, etc. The example we have here just has a little monthly calendar, which then has a little key on the side here to represent different items you might do for those extracurriculars. So going to training, going to games, etc. I've also included a section for goals for the extracurriculars, and also a section for notes. And then the rest of this part page here is taken up by a task list for those extracurricular activities. The next two ideas we have here are goal related. So a space to list out what your goals are as a student, and also a space to plan your goals. So for instance, this hypothetical student has the goal of achieving the Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award by May. So down the bottom here, they're planning out that program. So what do they have to do for their service hours, for skills, for physical recreation, and so on. We are a lot more likely to achieve our goals if we actually write them down, but we are way more likely to achieve our goals if we plan them out. So making sure you have both type of pages in your planner could be really useful. After this we have one that won't be necessary for everyone, but could be really useful for some of our students, and that's a budgeting spread. Keeping track of your finances can be really stressful, so making sure that you give your money some forethought can be really helpful. I do have a playlist of other money related spreads that may be really useful to anybody looking to start budgeting. But on the layout we have here, we have a section for the person's income and the different income streams they have, and then a section for the summary of their budget. So what their opening balance was, what their income was for the month, how much money went to fixed expenses and how much money went to flexible expenses, and then what was their closing amount. After this, we have a little budget breakdown section. So with one of our pie charts being the aim for the month and one of the pie charts being the actual for the month. So what your actual percentages of spending were. After this, we then have a spending log where on each line you could write what it is you're spending money on and then in which category you spent how much. So for instance, let's just say that category one was like rent and utilities. Maybe the first one you'll list here is electricity. So you'll put the amount in column number one. At the end of the month, you can then total up how much you had in each column and how this differed from your budgeted amount. So how much were you planning on spending in each category versus how much you actually spent in each category. Our next student bullet journal idea is a monthly dashboard. I put this one just on one page because it is supposed to act as an example. But as a busy student, you may need more space and thus may need to take up a full spread for this kind of layout. On this one though, I again have a mini calendar with a little key for different things that you might want to keep track of. So for instance, what days do you get paid from your work? What days do you have assessments or social events? Really whatever's relevant to you. We then have a section down the side here, which is a vertical monthly log, where you can list out any events that you have for the month. On the right hand side, we have some themed checklists. So the themes that I've gone with are assignments, readings, and personal tasks. But you could of course section these in a bunch of different ways. So making them related to each course, or breaking it down by priority, what's high, medium, and low priority. Really whatever works for you. After this, our next idea is a weekly layout, which again I've set up as a one page layout. But on this one, we have a section for each day of the week, a space for notes, spaces on the side for each of your subjects, a meal tracker down the bottom, and then a little space in here which could be used for decoration, could be used for a quote, or maybe a weekly priority. Again, as I said previously, these layouts are just supposed to be ideas, and if you wanted more inspiration for weekly layouts, I do have a playlist of weekly spread ideas linked in the description box. The idea we have on the right though is not so much productivity related, but more memory keeping related, and that's a then and now page. On this one, you'd put in a picture of you on your first day of the school year and you on the last day of the school year. In the sections at the side here, you could do some journaling or answer some prompts about you at that point in time. So for instance, at that time, what was your favorite song or favorite movie? What were you excited or nervous about? What was a goal that you had? And then at the end of the year, did you accomplish it? Things like that. These types of pages can be really cool to look back on in years to come. Question of the day for you though, what are your recommendations for learning related layouts? If you're a student, what's a layout that you find super helpful? Or if you're no longer a student, what's a layout that either you think would have been really useful or you know would have been really useful? For university Jess, it certainly would have been the grade tracker pages, but for high school Jess, it probably would have been a term overview. 
As always team, thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity, and personal development. Until next time, bye.